Hello everybody. Welcome to Math at a Go. This is Govardhan coming to you with Mathematics of 10th Standard. Here in this session, we will deal with the first chapter of 10th Mathematics. It is real numbers. Before beginning, let us know what real numbers are. Real numbers are all the numbers that we have been using all these days since we started our education. And to tell you in mathematical terms, we can say the numbers that can be represented on a number line are called real numbers. You have learned representing numbers on a number line. And for this, we will have a separate video with the link given below. For the time being, we should understand real numbers as the numbers that can be represented on a number line. And they include the counting numbers called natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers and irrational numbers. All of them together make up real numbers. Then, do we have to study all the numbers in this chapter? No, not all the numbers at a time, but we go step by step. In the beginning, we study about natural numbers using integers. In the next stage, we will study about rational numbers. And in the next stage, we will study about irrational numbers and so on. So, let us begin this chapter with a topic called Euclid's Division Lemma. This Euclid's Division Lemma, the name appears strange, but this is not so. This is your buddy, your childhood friend. Yes, this is your childhood friend, a buddy, your lovely buddy. How come so? Because this speaks about division which you learnt at your childhood and this unknowingly, without using this name, you have learnt and used it at your childhood itself. And now, today, your childhood friend, the buddy, has suddenly turned up at 10th standard. So, let us go and meet him and study about his nature. Let us get into this. Now, let us study Euclid's division lemma. The concept in this session is Euclid's division lemma. So, before going into this, why did he take this name, Euclid's division lemma? It has taken the name lemma first. What is a lemma? Lemma is a proven statement. Euclid has proved it. So, it is a proven statement used to prove some other statement. Oh, oh Euclid has proved it and has given it to us. Using that, we have to prove something else in this chapter as we move ahead. So, it is given the name Lemma. And this Lemma deals about division. Hence, we call it Division Lemma. And this was given by Euclid as told just now. So, this is called Euclid's Division Lemma. So, let us study this Euclid's Division Lemma because we will make use of this Lemma to prove so many things in this chapter as we move ahead. Okay? Right. As this name suggests, this is a division lemma. That means this speaks about division. So, let us take a small division and get an understanding of this lemma. So, if you take 14 and divide it by 4, let us take 14 and divide it by 4. Now, 4 3 is a 12 and the remainder is 2. Now, after completing this division, in general, we went on to verify at our childhood stage. Yes or no? Yes. We wanted to verify it whether the division we done is right or wrong. So, what do we do? We multiply this and this. This 4, the divisor, multiplied by 3, the quotient, and then add to 2, the remainder. We must be able to get 14. If so, if we get 14, this division is right. If not, this division is wrong. So, if this is satisfied, this division is right. So, let us see, does it satisfy or not? 4, 3 is a 12 and 12 plus 2 is 14. Therefore, this division is right. So, this is satisfied. This equation is satisfied. So, this is called Euclid's division lemma. Euclid's division lemma. Yes, this is Euclid's division lemma. In your childhood, you did not know the name. Just you did it as a practice. Now, you are learning about it in detail with the give name added to that. So, nothing new. Don't worry about that. So, what does this lemma say? This lemma says, for this fixed pair, this will be fixed. What does that mean? For example, what it says is, if you 
give 14 and ask them anybody to divide it by 4 what does this lemma say it says if you give this 14 to anybody anywhere anytime any day and ask them to divide it by 4 then they will only end up in getting 3 as quotient and 2 as remainder this is the concept of euclid stevenson lemma what is there new in this we all know that yes though it is known to you this is an important aspect of this lemma there is a lot of speciality in this so what it says for fixed pair of this and this this sign this will be fixed that is the thing so for a fixed pair of integers 14 and 4 the quotient and the remainder are fixed if you change any of these only they will change so this is one aspect for example instead of 14 you take 15 and divide by the same 4 you will not get the same you see 4 3 is a 12 and the remainder will be 3 you see this pair changed to this pair so because you changed this number there is a change in this even if you keep this one the same and change this one keep 14 the same and change this to 5 what do we get 5 twos are 10 and 4 remains so this again changed from 3 to 2 to 4 so as long as you kept this the same everybody got the same answer no matter who does it where they do it when they do it but once you go on to change any one of these there is a change in this pair also so this is an important aspect of this euclid's division lemma what does it say for a given pair of positive integers for a given pair of positive integers this pair is fixed fixed means unique what does unique means unique means existing as one of its kind and no other means so here for this pair this is unique that is one aspect of this Euclid's division lemma. And I have been saying positive integers, positive integers. What about this one? Let me speak to you after a small continuation. Okay. Now, so what more it says is for this fixed pair of positive integers, this is fixed. And not just being fixed means, for example, if I fix it like this, 14, 4, 5, 10. Can I write it? Any numbers like this and write them? For this pair, let I, let, can I keep this fixed? No. When you divide this by this, you must be able to get this one and this has remained only then that will be fixed. That means if you multiply this and add this, you must be able to get this only then that we say is fixed. That means these four numbers, this pair and that pair must satisfy this. So let us see, does every number satisfy this or only they satisfy this? So let us see, you have written randomly 5 and 10. So 4, 5 is a 20 plus 10, 30. It doesn't satisfy this. So you can't write any number and every number in this place. You have to write exclusively 3 and 2, no other number here. So only then this will be satisfied. 4 into 3 is 12 plus 2 added 14. No matter what number you keep in its place, provided they are integers, you will not get 14. So for this pair, this is fixed and these numbers must satisfy this kind of equation. What is this equation? This here, let us see what this equation is. Here, what is 14? 14 is the dividend so the dividend must be equal to what is this for this is the divisor so divisor multiplied by what is this 3 it is the quotient and what is this 2 the remainder so this must be satisfied whenever you do a division this must be satisfied but writing such a lengthy equation is definitely laborious we mathematicians want everything in short so let us take a short form of this one how can we write a short form so instead of taking these numbers dividend divisor like that let us take an example of a let this be a positive integer let it be any number positive integer and let us divide it by b because we don't know the value of a because we don't know the value of b we don't also know what we get here but let us think we get some integer q as quotient and some remainder let that be r 
then as per this verification method so this and this multiply together and add it to r must give you this one yes or no so this is euclid's division lemma expressed in short so what does this say if you divide a by b you must get q the quotient with remainder r and satisfying this one so a must be equal to b q plus r and this is called euclid's division lemma what is this a is the dividend b is the divisor q is the quotient and r is the remainder so this must be satisfied so for any given pair of positive integers there exist unique pair of integers for any given pair of positive integers there exist unique pair of integers satisfying this one this is most most important aspect of division lemma one aspect is they are fixed they are fixed and they satisfy this any number can't satisfy this one so they are fixed and only they can satisfy this a is equal to bq plus r okay is this all about euclid's division lemma one is for fixed pair of positive integers this pair of q and r are fixed that is unique second our concept is they satisfy this one is there anything else yes there is one more aspect about the remainder we speak more about remainder it is just like a childhood buddy when we meet him after a long time we go on inquiring what have we been doing all these days what about this one what about this one what about everything we go into detail yes or no because this has come after a long time to us we are going into detail of everything so we went into details of a and b when we divided that we got this and this and they must be satisfying this and finally an inquiry about remainder let us see what it says since we learnt about a b and the uniqueness of q and r let us now go into detail about the specifications that r requires is there anything that we can say about r let us see for example let us take the numbers 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 line let us go on dividing them by 2 3 4 5 and 5 continuously let us see now taking 5 and dividing it by 2 let us see what happens 2 to the 4 and the remainder is 1 and let us take 6 this time and divide it by 2 the same number 2 to the 6 the remainder is 0 this time and taking 7 the next time if you divide it by 2 2 to the 6 we will get 1 this time and if you take 8 the next time and divide it by 2 we will get zero as remainder as discussed just now here the quotients don't matter much our concentration is on the remainders now if you take the remainders what do we see the remainders are either 1 or 0 1 0 if you go on continuing also you'll only end up in getting either 1 or 0 as remainders when you divide any number by 2 no matter what number you take how big the number may be you'll only end up in getting 1 or 0 as remainders now let us take 3 and see what the remainders will be like taking the first number 5 you go on dividing it 3 ones are 3 and the remainder is 2 taking the next number 6 divided by 3 3 twos are 6 the remainder is 0 taking the next number 7 and dividing it by 3 3 twos are 6 and the remainder is 1 taking the next number 8 and dividing it by 3 we get 3 twos are 6 and the remainder being 2 9 dividing it by 3 and getting 3 into 3 9 is equal to 0 and taking 10 and dividing it by 3 3 3 are 9 getting 1 as remainder if you observe the remainders here they are like this 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 so when you divide any number by 3 you are getting the remainders like 0 1 2 2 here also let us take it like this 0 1 here 0 1 2 now let us observe what happens if you divide any number by 4 divide 5 by 4 so 4 ones are 4 you are getting 1 as remainder if you take 6 and divide it by 4 4 ones are 4 and the remainder is 2 if you are taking 7 and dividing it by 4 4 ones are 4 and the remainder is 3 if you are taking the next number 8 and divide it by 4 Four to the eight, the remainder is zero. If you take the next number nine and divide it by four, four to the eight, the remainder is one. 
if you take the next number 10 and divide it by 4 4 to the 8 the remainder is 2 so if you observe the remainders here they are continuous like this 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 0 so we can write when you divide any number by 4 the remainders will be 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 now observing these divisors and their respective remainders can we say anything i can say one thing if we are dividing by two we are getting two types of remainders if you dividing by three you are getting three types of remainders if you are dividing by four you are getting four types of remainders right that is one aspect and what is the next aspect everywhere you are definitely getting zero as remainder and it is beginning from zero and going on zero one either zero one two or zero one two three like that until that number but not just that number just ending before that number so beginning from zero it is ranging up to that number but not that number so what can we say about that number that remainder is always less than the divisor here what did we take the divisor the divisor is b so the remainder we can say it is less than b yes or no so the remainder is always less than b but if you say it is less than b for example, if you take let that value of b be 3, what are the values less than 3? It can be 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2 also. But did we get any negative values here? No. They will only end up at 0. So, they range from 0 only. So, it goes from 0 to b. So, this may be equal to 0 or greater than 0. So, r value ranges from 0 to less than b that means r is greater than r equal to 0 and less than b so what can you say about r r is greater than or equal to 0 and less than b don't be confused the symbol is actually less than or equal to 0 but i have been reading it as greater than or equal to 0 because here r matters not 0 matters so in view of r this is definitely greater than 0 so we say r is greater than or equal to 0 and less than b this is the third aspect of euclid's division lemma what are the three aspects let us see one thing is for a given pair of positive integers a and b q and r are fixed unique second thing they must satisfy this equation a is equal to bq plus r and thirdly this must be satisfied what is that r must be greater than or equal to 0 and less than b if you sum them all up together we get what is called the euclid's division lemma your buddy let us sum up what is that for a given pair of positive integers a and b there exist unique pair of integers q and r satisfying a is equal to bq plus r where r is greater than or equal to 0 and less than b now we have left out one thing we have been specifying positive integers positive integers positive integers why that let us see for example we have taken 4 and we are dividing it by minus 3 let us imagine so 3 ones are we'll get minus 3 for example if you have to subtract it becomes 7 do you know that yes it becomes 7 and this violates this rule do you know why remainder must be less than the divisor yes or no remainders are always less than the divisors but here the remainder is not so this rule is violated because you have taken a negative integer so whenever you take negative integer everything becomes reversed so we are studying the nature of natural numbers using integers so we will only study about taking positive integers which follow these rules and if you take negative integers they will violate the rule therefore we consider this lemma only for positive integers